Well, hello everybody. Today I'm up in Smithfield, Rhode Island. I'm going to be taking the World War II Memorial Trail. This will be the site of a memorial where a World War II bomber had crashed. View of Providence from here, although I don't know if the GoPro is going to pick it up. Yes, I'm still filming on the GoPro. Um, reason being, it's a little wet out here. I don't want to take my other camera just in case. This is the start of the trail. And as you can see, the sign says World War II Memorial Trail starting from the Conservation Center. We're going to follow the white trail to the green trail and then follow the yellow trail markers. This will be a 4.5 mile loop on the uh, billboard here. They got some pictures of some different flowers and wildlife that you can see. So if you notice by the uh, trail, our snow that we had is pretty much gone. It gets a little bit icy. I do have my uh, trekking poles with me today. I also have um, my ice cleats if I need them. Not going to start out with them right now because it's a lot of uh, mud. I'm just going to take a picture of the sign here so that I know which trails to follow. So it's the uh, white to green and then the yellow. So we're going to take a picture of that and then we're going to get started on our journey. So the trail starts out the uh, conservation center and I'm going to have to uh, cross the road up here to get on the other side. Now they tell you to take a picture of the map, so which I did. There were no trail maps in the box and they tell you to bring a walking stick if possible. And the reason being is we're going to gain 415 feet in elevation. So. Hopefully this is not going to be straight up, otherwise uh, I don't know if I'm going to get in the full 4.5 miles today. Some spots are a little bit icy from the thorn refreezes, but so far I don't need my trekking poles or my ice cleats. So I'm going to cross the road and then we're actually going to be on our way to the trails. This is the trail we're on. Just met up with one kid coming down and he said the trail is very icy so May have to make a call and actually put on my ice cleats. By the looks of the uh, rest of the trail, the amount of snow we still got through the woods up in here. I am going to go ahead and put on the ice cleats. Much better walking already. So we'll see if we need to opt for the uh, trekking poles, but at least I got the cleats on for now because this ice is pretty bad on this trail. Now we're following the green trail. Also, this is the Blue Mary Maori Trail. Kind of guess they run together at this point. So as you can see, it's still very icy and very rocky. Haven't had to use the trekking poles yet. Still just dealing with the ice cleats. So it looks like the green trail makes a shop right over here. So this is the way we go. So I keep having to remind people about trash. I wish I did it. People pack it in, pack it out. Shouldn't really be drinking up here in the woods anyway because I know you're trying to keep warm, but it can also get dangerous because it messes with your senses. It actually constricts your blood vessels so that you're actually uh, colder than what you think you are. All right, so we come to the intersection of the Yellow Trail and such a beautiful day meeting up with a few people out in these woods to Memorial Trail follow the Yellow Markers. So this should bring me up to the uh, site of the uh, bomber crash. Total Yellow Trail length is uh, 1.55 miles to the Mercer Trail.
All right, so we come up along the uh, power lines now. Shouldn't be that far now to the uh, site. So here we have some more of those New England stone walls that you just find out in the woods. Used to uh, depict property boundaries. This one here comes to a corner and then goes down that way. So this is probably a uh, plot of land. Uh, either marking a boundary or possibly it was an old farm field at one time. So we're still continuing on the yellow trail. Haven't quite reached the site yet, but according to the map, I should not be that far. So I should be right at the memorial, according to the map. It's supposed to be a, a stone plaque around here. This is interesting because I don't see, I don't see any markers. It's supposed to be right at the memorial, right where these trails cross. Now I'm gonna go to the left that said it's the actual memorial loop. It's just a uh, short loop. Now I'm following the white trail up to Mercer Hill Lookout where you can see the views of Providence and the old uh, Boy Scout camp. So we're at Mercer Hill right now and we'll come up to the old fireplace. This is one of the spots that I wanted to see. Apparently this was part of a lodge of an old uh, Boy Scout camp. Down that way is all overlooking Providence, and you can even see the uh, windmills on the bay. Alrighty, so I don't know how well the quality is going to be on my phone. But that is actually overlooking Providence. Um, zoomed in probably at about six times. But that's all uh, downtown Providence. You can actually hear the uh, highway. Uh, it looks like somebody's got a little fire pit going. Yeah, this is the old fireplace. Uh, the old uh, Boy Scout Lodge that used to be up here in Boy Scout Camp. Don't see any indication of a date as to when this might have been in use. Before it gets too dark, I'm going to head back down on the yellow trail, see if I can find the memorial. And then we're going to head back to the car. And I got somebody's hunting dog coming up on me. All right, so I just met up with a nice lady walking her dog. And uh, I asked her about the uh, camp. That was a Boy Scout camp that burnt down in the 1930s um, that they never rebuilt. So the fireplace was probably part of the lodge. So it looks like it was in use up until the 1930s. I also asked her about the memorial. And it was a World War II bomber. Three men uh, doing training out of Connecticut did actually crash there. And she said, my plan on taking the yellow trail back to the car, I should pass right by it. She said the map I was following is a little bit off because number one, the memorial loop throws everybody off. And then also number two, they changed the yellow trail a little bit, but haven't updated the uh, map. I probably got about two hours before it gets dark, so headed back on the white trail. Going to meet up with the yellow trail, and then um, we'll see. Hopefully I can find the memorial, because there should be a sign pointing right to it up in the rock. Alrighty, well, it looks like I finally found it. Where I came in from the power lines was actually a little bit off. So we did find it on top of the hill right here. 
So what happened is, I had the yellow trail that isn't marked properly anymore. It actually goes up behind the rock, up around that way. It says right here, on this location, 5th of August, 1943, three U.S. servicemen perished in an aircraft accident. Second Lieutenant Otis R. Port Portawig from Richmond, Virginia, TSGT, I think it's Training Sergeant Herbert D. Booth from Rahway, New Jersey, and Second Lieutenant Saul Winston from Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And they got a sticker also that says smithfieldrhodeisland.com wolf hill plane crash that you can go to the website and check it out so i'm gonna go to the website real quick okay so i just brought up the uh web page which i'll show you again the article is uh pretty lengthy um but hopefully you can read that and I also link down in the description, but it said on August 5th, 1943, U.S. Army Corps twin-engine aircraft crashed on the Georgiaville side of Wolf Hill, and three servicemen lost their lives. As with many events, details get forgotten over time. The story is worth retelling both as an, a historical event and a way to remember. Um, the plane was a Lockheed RB-34, to be precise. It was an rb 34A-4 target tug, one of the only 16 produced for this purpose, and its military serial number was 41-38116. It was initially designed to be a light coastal patrol bomber to be used in anti-submarine warfare by the British military before the United States entered World War II. So the article is actually very lengthy. It says the plane that crashed on Wolf Hill was a target tug. Its, for its function was to tow canvas gunnery targets to a safe distance behind it, usually over open water where fighter pilots would take turns making runs at it with their aircraft. The fighter pilots would shoot paint-coated ammunition with each pilot given a different color so that afterwards when the target was evaluated, uh, one could see which pilots had done well and ones that had it. So like I said, this is a very lengthy, lengthy article. You can actually read it. It goes on for a while, but they keep this memorial up to them. Like I said, there is a sign that says Airman Memorial, but the yellow trail um, is a little bit off compared to what I was following on the map. Just follow the yellow trail and you'll get there eventually. And if you come up to the uh, memorial loop, uh, double back because the memorial loop is actually down on the bottom of this hill. But yeah, the um, power lines is what threw me off as far as coming in because they moved the yellow trail. And apparently there's like two different entrance ways and I ended up on the wrong part of the yellow trail. So you can see the yellow trail signs here. Um, the rock pointing yellow trail goes that way and yellow trail goes that way. That's the trail they moved. So it doesn't actually take you up to the Airman Memorial. What you have to do is go up the power lines, probably about a good 100 feet or so, and then there's a trail to the left. Take that one, that'll take you to the Airman Memorial and then back on where the yellow trail was. So that's where we got confused the last time because um, they didn't update the maps. And if you're coming through here this time of year, glad I got the ice cleats on because right now it's very muddy and I'd probably be sliding if I didn't have the cleats on. Just be advised that your maps uh, and the all trails maps are probably not the best. Sometimes it's good to ask and then you find out that, yep, the uh, land trust moved the trail and by a few hundred feet and that's what throws you off in these woods. In a little bit different way back. Starting to get down to the lower elevations now, so it's getting a little more icy.
I don't know how much the camera is catching it, but I have a view of the lake down here. Here's another view of the lake with the road right below us. Might be able to see some of the cars going by. So we're back at the car at the uh, conservation center, which is definitely closed right now. Got a handicapped accessible fishing area, which I'm gonna check out real quick. I wanna come fishing here. Didn't know that this uh, actually existed over here. Over there is the conservation center, which is closed right now. Picnic table to have a picnic. And then over here is where they got the little fishing dock. Got a good little view. I'm assuming, by the way, I came down the trail that that hill right there might be um, Wolf Hill, or that might be another hill, not exactly sure. So yeah, we're back in the car now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, get my ice spikes off. Looks like we got a little rock garden over here. Let's check that out real quick. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Proverbs 3.3, 3, St. Michael's Kindness Rock Garden. And got some rocks and a lot of people do this. Take that with me. I'll take that with me. There's no reason for that. This is painted pretty nicely. Some paper to write stuff in there. Alrighty, well, let's get back to the car, get these ice spikes off. So my little uh, closing word of advice is, if you're gonna go out hiking in the winter time, get yourself a pair of uh, spikes. Yak tracks are okay, but they got that spring, so it's not that good. And then don't settle for those little tiny ones that barely grip. You really want to go with something serious. These did a real good job out on the trail today. Probably paid about 35 for these at uh, Ocean State Job Lot. But if you look at the size spikes on them, they did a really good job.